Hi guys, today we're going to talk about my favourite fountain pens and kind of what I have in my superior label of a pen roll. I do have a video from when I first got this and what I put in there then versus now so you can check that out but this is basically how it is now and I pretty much keep things in here that I use almost every day I would say. It's been a little bit less lately doing uh, you know videos and things like that but pretty much these are uh, daily tools and daily things. I got um, scissors and rulers and then a few fountain pens, a few brush pens, a few um, fine liners and things like that. So you can see my color scheme is champagne gold, silvery beige, that kind of thing. I really love that color. So, and then I also have a couple of other dip pens. We're going to go into the next video. Uh, so I'm going to try and upload videos on Tuesday, Thursday, and hopefully Saturday as well. So hopefully that's my new schedule and I can stick to it. But um, the next video we have will be about dip pens and kind of an updated version of what I'm using now and how I am doing that. So um, this is a, I'll, I'll link everything, you know, in the description. Um, it's a fairly inexpensive one, but it's just a nice one because you can carry the um, nib in it. So here's a brushable, uh, Zig brushable as well. I really like these for hand lettering. Or just for creating pale back backgrounds or uh, highlighting. These, I have a video on their Derwent um, pencil blenders. I really like both of those. I like having them there as well. They're pretty, pretty nice. And then there's the Wink of Stella and a Blackwing pencil. So what else have I got there? So my recording screen was covering it, but that is a, a graphite aquarel, a Faber-Castell one. And then I have a few mechanical pencils. And so we will talk a little bit more in depth about those in the video as well today. So it is sort of about the fountain pens and the mechanical pencils. So the other thing I wanted to say is this is a three or four year collection and these are, and I kind of wait to get a pen, so like for example when I wanted a Lamy, I wanted to get one, if I only ever get one, it's the one that I really like instead of getting, you know, three or four um, that I'm not necessarily as excited about, so uh, anyway, we'll just go through and kind of explain everything. So this is a Copic fine liner, this is the point one. I really like this uh, for art. Uh, you can get a cheaper version. The Unipin fine liner is my go-to everyday fine liner, but I just like um, having this one. It's kind of the more aesthetic version. And then we have the Cavalier, the Pilot Cavalier. So I got this from Jet Pens. This is in champagne gold. And you can see it has a cartridge and I've had the cartridge for two years and I just keep filling it up with an ink syringe. So. Um, I really like it as an everyday writer and then I have this one it's an it's it's an Enso E-N-S-S-O so I, I always get mixed up is it an Esno or an Enso but uh, this is also from Jet Pens and it's a very lightweight pen it's almost a little bit too light but it's again it's aesthetic and it actually has a Coletto silver um, refillable like silver in it and I really like that it's a really nice color so I, it's good for art this one is my Lamy Lux in palladium so I really enjoy this pen uh, when I first got it, it it wrote actually a little bit um, I wanna don't want to say rough but you know it was a bit hard to write with once I flushed it it's been so beautiful ever since so I really really love this pen and um, 
Then this one here, I got this, I think just before Easter. It's a Kaweco uh, Owl aluminium, like so it's a metal one and it's silver. Uh, but this is an extra fine nib. I really love the pen, but the nib is so fine. Uh, it's almost a little bit too scratchy. So if I got this again, I'd get it in a fine probably or a medium. Um, but I really love this little pen. It's actually the only one that I have with a metal uh, grip section and I really prefer the metal grip section to the plastic. I really wish more pens would uh, give a metal grip section because it's just so much nicer to uh, hold than the plastic. And then this is, oh yeah, I'm just showing you the cartridge in the Lamy. So I don't have converters in any of my fountain pens uh, because I think that the converter can take up some of the ink space. So I just like to refill the cartridges. And then I just have um, pencils, we'll, we'll go through those, and the Tombow Mono Eraser, and I have the rectangular one. But I've heard so many good things about it, but I, I find that the eraser is a bit... Uh, it's not really my favourite, so I'm just going to show you here. This is the Kur uh, Uni Kuratoga. This is my favourite mechanical pencil, and the eraser on it is my favourite eraser as well. So I'm just kind of showing you how that erases versus the um, the Tombow one. I just find that it's it doesn't quite erase everything. So. It's funny because I heard so many good things about it, but it just it's just not my favorite. You can kind of see there that the um, the line is still a little bit stronger on the page. And generally when you use the Kurotoga one, it's not in this extreme lighting, so you don't really see it as much. So this next one is a Kaweco SketchUp pencil. This is in the color Satin. You can get them from Jet Pens in Chrome and a few different colors. Uh, I love this little pencil so it takes uh, I think 5.6 millimeter lead um, this is my black wing we uh, have a box of these and we just kind of distribute them around the house I really love these but um, back to the satin it's a really gorgeous pencil and it is the one that I use when I want to feel beautiful <laughs> so you know a lot of people like um, some women will wear makeup or get dressed up and I just love pulling out my Kaweco SketchUp and it just feels so elegant to write with. So I'm behind but the last pencil there is my everyday uh, my favorite sketching pencil. It's a watercolor uh, lead pencil so it's the Faber-Castell Graphite Aquarelle. I really like it. And you can get those in singles from Jackson's Art. And then this one is the Zig Brushable. It's, I think it's in the color Baby Pink. This was actually my mum's uh, marker and I uh, have stolen that off her. And then, then I'm just showing you here the um, Wink of Stella. You can't really see it. I couldn't really get it to shine on camera, but it's just a brush of shimmer, basically. You can just brush across your page. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I really like to use it with stencils on the back of my journaling pages. So before I write, I will um, use the Wink of Stella and a stencil and brush it on there. And the last one here that we have is the, this is a tiny one. It's called a Sharp, I think, Pentel Sharp. So it's just a little pocket uh, mechanical pencil. And I got this off Amazon, I think it was something like $8, but I did see on there one for like $800. So no, that that's not, they're just like an, an $8 pencil. Anyway, so I'm just showing you here the, um, the Esno one, the Enso one, <laughs> uh, in regards to, like in relation to a pencil grip. And it's a slightly smaller. I actually kind of wish it was, um, double the width or just at least a half again because it's just um, even like the pilot I'm showing you here it's kind of comparable this is a very slim pen but uh, the weight the weight of the pilot is still really nice to write with but the other one is just a little bit too light to hold properly 
but again it is aesthetic and I really like the silver refill in it so it does come with a black refill but I like the silver and so here you can see there's no bleed through from anything the tiny splotches you can see are from the page before where I was sort of drenching the page in ink and did I mention that we are doing all these in a the AP card notebook from Jet Pens as well I really love this one So I thought that I had everything and then I realized I have two more pens that aren't here in this lineup. So I have a, so we'll go through them now. So this is the Twisby Eco in the Rose Gold. It's a limited edition and it is the stub nib. So it's a 1.1 millimeter. The really, I absolutely love this nib. I wish I had have gotten a stub nib sooner. It makes your writing really nice. So without you having to do any, um, you know, thin, thin upstrokes or thick downstrokes, you already have that inbuilt into the pen. So it gives you, a slight bit of variation it's not um, it's not too drastic it's just a really nice amount of variation in your writing I really love it I do have a whole nother video about this and I have the Robert Oster Rose Gilt Tint ink in there at the minute. It's not an ink I would recommend keeping in your pen unless you know you're going to write with it quite a lot and you're going to get rid of the ink out of the pen quite quickly because it is a high maintenance ink so um, I think it's the shimmer in it. You, you might need to clean out your pen a bit more regularly but it's my favourite ink. I really love it. Um, Later on this week we'll actually go, and you can see there like I'm just pulling in some pages so if I don't need to write with it that day I might just pull out a scrap piece of paper and write the alphabet or something. Uh, but, what was I saying, yeah, it's my favourite ink, it's, it's such a gorgeous ink. And later on this week we'll go through all my ink swatches, so just the ones I currently have, even some ink samples and where I get them and things like that. So here you can see all the pens capped and sizes in relation to each other. The Twisby is the largest and I do not use, like I won't write with it capped, it's too heavy. Um, and this one is fine capped, I really like the weight of this one. I, I think that's my only thing about the Twisby is that I really prefer to be able to cap the pen. I just, I'm always afraid of losing it. Um, yeah this is another little one I forgot about so this is the Kaweco um, I think it was also a special edition of frosted one I got it off Amazon for $13 and it's one of the old nibs I think because it doesn't quite work all the time so they had some problems with their nibs at one point now they have a new supplier so you get a really nice nib now but I think that was just on sale because it was an old one and so it, it often like it stops and it, there's some problems with it.
So you can see here, I should have actually taped the paper down. The paper kept moving, but this is a 2.3 millimeter uh, stub nib, I think, or is it even called a stub nib if it's 2.3 millimeters? So it is a larger, thicker nib, so you can get, you know, larger calligraphy lines with it. I really enjoy it. Um, if I can get it to work a little bit better and a bit more smoothly, then I'll be able to use it a lot more. But you can see the difference in the line width here. That's the 1.1 stub. And also the difference of the ink that's coming out of a thicker nib or a thinner nib. And then hopefully you can see the difference there between both of those and an extra fine nib. So I'm kind of showing you what you can use this type of nib for, um, really nice old style uh, English lettering and things like that. I'm just kind of making this up, I, I really need to print out a sheet so I can actually see what I'm doing here, but um, you kind of get an idea of what you can do with it. And that is pretty much it for this video, so I will leave you with a clip of the inks that we're going to be swatching. So the next one will be on the dip pens on Thursday and then hopefully on Saturday we will do the color swatching, the ink swatching, so um, I will see you guys then. Bye!